this table here, uh, we're going to talk about all the different things we're going to try and measure and give an introduction to these units, right? The first thing you need to know is that basically, basically, we've got two types of things we want to measure and then lots of different subways of doing that. And um, not to be too technical about it, but the two things we want to measure are space and stuff, right? How much space does something take up and how much stuff can you, well, I'll explain when you have a look at the two different measures of stuff, okay? So, three measures of space. There are three because we live in, we inhabit a three-dimensional world. So we like to measure things in three dimensions, okay? The three measurements are, does anyone know? They start with an L, an A, and a V. Uh, We've got volume, I heard. Another one. Area, Area and... Length. Now, you gave them to me in reverse, reverse order. I've put them in this order because they correspond to length is one dimension, right? That's why you can use something straight. It's a line. One dimension means you can only go back and forth in one direction, okay? Whereas area is something which you need a plane for, right? So that's two dimensions. You can have length, for example, and width, that's this way and this way. You can fill in what's volume? Three. Three dimensions, okay? So these are the different ways that we can talk about how much space an object takes up, okay? Now, let's think about these units for a second. We have, like we said, the, the metric system. We're gonna talk about conversions shortly. Um, but what units do we know about for measuring lengths? Okay, we've got, let's actually put meters, we'll put it sort of in the middle, okay? And on either side of that, we've got things that are smaller than that and things that are bigger. What will be something a little bit smaller than a meter? Centimeters. centimeters, okay? So we'll go that way. And you can go smaller than centimeters again, right? Millimeters. millimeters. Um, but not only can you get smaller, you can get bigger. We'd pretty much go to kilometers. And I think those are all our common metric units. I have said common because there are some other ones, but they're, you know, for example, there's nanometers, that's getting even smaller, but clearly in our context, that's not as common, all right? Now, here's the cool thing, one of the great um, advantages of the metric system. When you're then going up from one dimension to two dimensions, you don't introduce a whole new set of things. For example, you might say, um, you guys started with, uh, did you start with meters? You started with meters, right? So you'd say, well, now that I'm in two dimensions, I'll talk about a square meter, right? We take the same idea, and if you go one meter, one meter, like a square, literally, okay? That is what we call a square meter. And you can read that as meters squared if you like, but I, I prefer to say square meters. Uh, it's the same for all the others, right? You've got square centimeters. You've got square millimeters. And I'm going to pause there. Because think about this for a second. The next thing up, based on the top of um, based on the top of our um, rows there, would be kilometers squared. Now, a kilometer. Think of a kilometer. Uh, we'll go back up to my square over here. Think of a kilometer and how big this space is. A square kilometer is a lot of space. Okay. So therefore, because we actually want sort of more useful measures that are a bit smaller than that, but bigger than just a square meter, which is about this desk that I'm sitting at. We have something in between. Um, yeah, that's right. We've got hectares. Does anyone know what the, um, yeah, HA is the abbreviation. Um, we've got acres, but that's part of the imperial system and they don't fit very well, right? So we'll talk about, we'll talk about acres later on. I will mention it to you just out of curiosity, but you've got hectares in the middle there. Does anyone know how many square meters there are in a hectare? There are 10,000. 10, and where it comes from is, see this guy up here, this square that I've drawn? That's one kilometer by one kilometer. So if I wrote that in meters, what would that be? That would be a thousand meters here and a thousand meters here. So where does 10,000 fit into this? It's going to be a hundred meters by, oh, I rubbed off too much. By a hundred meters. You see that? A hundred times a hundred, that's four zeros. That's... 10,000, yeah? So 100 meters by 100 meters, much easier to picture a hectare. That's a very, very useful sort of unit of measurement. And um, we use that in farms or in large properties all the time, okay? So that's what a hectare is. And then after that, if you wanted something even bigger, you can have a square kilometer. Yes? Nine acres. We should do a conversion there. I'll talk about, you know, when we're, when we're trying to get back and forth between those in a minute. It doesn't surprise me. 
Um, okay, now, lastly, for three dimensions, again, we're taking the pattern. We have uh, cubic meters. We have cubic centimeters. We have cubic millimeters. And pretty much, in common terms, that's all you're really going to get. Like, there's not really a measure above that that gets used very, very frequently. I mean, you could talk about, I suppose, cubic kilometers, but they're massive, right? So, like I said, this is a column for common things, so that's where I'm just going to leave those. Okay? Now, you remember, I said... Yeah, I know. It's kind of cool, right? Um, I said we're about measuring space, how much space something takes up, and we're also about measuring stuff. So there are two things here that I wonder if you know, you've heard these words before, that are both measures of uh, some kind of stuff, but different kinds of stuff, right? So related to volume is capacity, right? Now, capacity is a measure of how much stuff can you fit inside a container, okay? Um, so how much fits inside? So this is kind of similar to, I suppose you would say, internal volume, okay? Now, this is a bit weird because volume and capacity are very, very closely related. They're both about, um, like, you know, three dimensions, yeah? What kinds of units are related to capacity, yeah? Ah, now... We have cubic centers which talk about like the three-dimensional thing, but I'm going to leave them up here under volume. If you went and you bought a container of, say, liquid from, you know, you'd measure that in. So here's some units. Liters. What if it was smaller than liters? Okay. Which we would shorten as mils. Okay. Um, you can have ones that are smaller than that, but less common. What would be if you've, say, seen your parents like water bill or something? It's going to be in kiloliters, okay? So that's a small K. So you can see here, all of these are measures about how much stuff can I fit in here? And this is kind of like history, yeah? Um, people started off measuring, okay, we've been, you know, milking cows for a long time, so we have the same kind of container. How much can you put in there? Well, let's call this a liter, all right? But the people wanted to be able to make containers that are going to fit a liter in there, so you want to be able to measure that out. So that's why volume and capacity kind of are approaching the same problem, three dimensions, in from different angles, as it were, okay? Uh, there is also the question when you, you can only fit a certain amount of space, uh, stuff inside something, and the container is much bigger, uh, but we'll talk about those later on. One more measure of stuff, mass. which is mass, okay? So remember, capacity is how much fits inside. Mass is about how much is it made of, right? Like literally, if you were to take all of the atoms inside this object, what stuff it's made of, and you added it all up, uh, how much would you get, right? So it's worth noting that mass doesn't change if you're like in space, for example, okay? So you've got no weight in space, but you still have the same mass that you have if you're down on Earth or on the surface of Saturn or whatever, okay? How do we measure mass? Kilograms. Okay, so we'll talk about kilograms. What would be smaller than kilograms? Grams. What would be smaller than grams? Milligrams. Okay. Uh, because I'm going from big to small. Big to small. No. No. Okay. Now, interestingly, and this is probably a bit of an exception, but uh, if you had a million grams, a million grams, right? Uh, using the prefixes that we're about to talk about in this table down below, you would call that a megagram, but we don't call them megagrams. We have another name for them. They're called tons. Okay? So you're like, oh, wait. A million grams is the same as a thousand kilograms, right? So a metric ton is the next one up. Okay, last one here, and it's a little bit weird, so I'm going to put it in a different color. Doesn't really fit with all the rest of these, but I didn't want to have a table with just one row. So I do want to tell you one non-metric measure, but you guys are so good at it, I don't think it'll be that much of an issue. And the quantity that we're measuring here is time, right? So is it, you know, how long? That's, that's the question that this uh, answers. Uh, and of course, we know the, the units for these. Again, thinking about common units and going from big to small, uh, we're going to go days, hours, tell me what comes next, minutes, minutes and seconds, okay? So 
this is non-metric, right? Uh, it, it's not a decimal base, it's not base 10, unlike all the rest of it. We've got uh, 24 hours in a day, and 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a minute. By the way, does anyone know why they're called minutes and seconds? Anyone? Oh, yeah. Minutes. Minute. If you saw this word with no context, you would not know what it meant. It would be either minute or minute. And minute, of course, just means small, right? So all a minute is, is a small part of an hour. Like, because an hour is a very long time and we want a finer measure than that, right? So then why is this called a second? Well, it's because it's the second minute division of time, right? If there was another one, I guess they'd call them third, but that's gonna get confusing. So anyway, we're, we're very, we've been using these since we were, you know, able to talk. So there you go, that's why they're called what they are.